The former Bush 43 special assistant, Christie. We've got USA Today congressional reporter Eliza Collins and finally Connell McShane. Connell, we're told that the reason potentially for the delay at the White House is they're not all on the same page, first of all, on this uh, China deal and how, how far to go and, uh, you know, those abroad who might be dumping steel on our shores here, that Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, a former steel guy himself, is in favor of, of tariffs that could be up to 24 percent, but that Gary Cohn, Defense Secretary Mattis are not, and that is delaying this. What are you hearing? Yeah, good luck trading some of these steel and aluminum stocks today. Um, boy, I don't envy Blake. Uh, he does a good job in re trying to figure out what's going on inside this White House and report it back to us. It seems circus-like, uh, for <laughs> lack of a better term now, to watch the president to put together what's supposedly going to be a policy and be announced, and then next thing you know, there's no announcement. I think the best guess is here that we still will see some sort of a move. It's just an order of magnitude as to what that move will be on steel and aluminum. Um, um, the concern, you know, from more and more people that you talk to is what the after effect of this will be. We, you, a lot of times we see it through the prism of how will other countries react? What will China do? What will Mexico do? But in this bigger picture debate, Neil, that we're having about inflation in this country, it's been pointed out in the Wall Street Journal this morning and in other places that at the end of the day on all of this, and the president knows this because he said as much yesterday, the president's looking to do a trade here short term for jobs, and he's willing to give up price to do that. We're going to pay more for items if we impose tariffs on any of those items. And higher prices, something that we have not had to deal with for many years, is something we will have to deal with in, in the future. Many people will argue if we do put these tariffs in place. Yeah, you know, Eliza, I don't know how this sorts out. I do know the president's uncanny luck has been that every time he has a good performance or, or has a good meeting, let's say this meeting, with Republicans and Democrats yesterday in the White House uh, that was televised in which he you know, was freely exchanging and batting uh, back and forth a number of ideas and resolutions that could go through and be passable and get 60 votes in the Senate. Shortly thereafter, we hear about, you know, Hope Hicks and resigning, and it takes all the thunder away. And this is an uncanny development that happens almost every time. Um, what do you make of that? You're right. It's definitely the president's luck that just as he's starting to make movement on a policy issue, although you called it a good meeting, I think some Republicans in that meeting do not agree, although some of the Democrats... Yeah, they like were a little surprised on a couple Einstein. of things, right? Yeah. Exactly. He said concealed carry wouldn't work. Of course, that's a big NRA proposal. But back to just the White House's messaging strategy. They always happen to stamp on themselves. Um, this one was with Trump's most trusted aide, I would argue, besides his kids, besides Ivanka and Jared, Hope Hicks has been there since the very beginning. I remember during the campaign emailing her early on, and she's leaving, and that is a big deal, and she's leaving the day after admitting for, to telling white lies um, to protect the president, which she reporting says that wasn't the same thing, but of course that just all swoops up the headlines and takes away from what the president wants to talk about, which is guns or potentially these tariffs today. Um, the palace intrigue always seems to supersede the policy. Ron, where does this go? This would not be the first White House with personnel changes, maybe the first with the, the, the increasing nature of them. But uh, how is this all going to work out? Because obviously the media being the media will obviously focus on the conflict or focus on resignations. That's just human nature, I guess. But, but not much said, again, with some of the, uh, the back and forth outside of the concessions and all that on the gun thing. Uh, but there was some progress made, even at that meeting, uh, even to Eliza's point, it, it, it you know, rankled some folks. What do you think? Hey, Neil, I, I think there are two things at play here. From a personal aspect, this is a devastating blow to the president. This is someone who, as Eliza noted, he's very close to. He trusts her. She's been around since the campaign. She's worked for the family. To lose someone that you have that much trust in is, is going to be hard for a president who feels increasingly isolated. Now, from a political standpoint, uh, you always lose staff in the White House. In our case, we had Karen Hughes and Karl Rove. They were both very close to President Bush. But once they leave, you get your footing, you regain your footing, and you move on. So it's going to be a sting for the president in the short, ter short term, but long term, I don't think this is really going to have that much of an impact on the White House. Well, isn't that going to be a little bit more challenging, though, Neil, to, you know, to Ron's point about whether you really do move on? I mean, it's just, you were talking about it yesterday with the Jeff Sessions tweet. I mean, if you're somebody looking in from the outside of this White House now and you're thinking about applying for a job, for lack of a better term, why would you want to do that? Why, what is the motivation for someone to come in and work from the outside? Right. Now, can they promote from the inside with somebody like Mercedes Schlapp, the communications director? 
future, whichever way they go. Yeah, of course. But in the longer term, as you lose people, and they're losing people at a faster rate than past administrations have, it seems to me it's going to be challenging to fill those roles if you're working for a president who could blast you at any time about just about any subject, as he's done to his own cabinet. Yeah, and as he's done reportedly to Hope Hicks. Now, the, the reports were, Eliza, and you're closer to this than I am, but that he got very upset by the white lies comment, um, knew what she meant, but didn't think it did serve the administration in any positive way. And uh, that, that caused problems. Uh, how much have you heard on that? Well, we've heard that he was upset about that, and he was also upset about a few weeks back the Rob Porter, who was a high-level staffer in the White House, who Hope Hicks had actually been dating. Um, there were domestic abuse allegations. Hicks was close to sort of the PR kind of trying to cover for them initially, and that caused friction with the president. And Hope Hicks and the president have been very close from the beginning. She very rarely makes him angry, and so to have these two different things close together, kind of the president turning on her, at least expressing anger, I imagine was a newer thing. Now, reporting says that it was not the white lies comment that she had been telling the staff before yesterday she was going to leave. Of course, the day before that, Josh Raphael, who is Ivanka and Jared, works with Gary Cohn. He's a deputy um, communications in the White House. He announced he's leaving. He's close to Hicks. It's just a lot of turmoil over there, at least in the communications department. You know, Ron, when you're working in a White House and people go, now you mentioned, I believe, Karen Hughes and Carl mm -hmm. Grove. Now, they had been there longer before their departures. This is, I know in the, in the scheme of politics these days, uh, staying a year or more with somebody throughout a campaign is a lifetime, uh, but, but it, it's a different sense of what is long these days, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. Look, with this White House, it seems like we've had a lot more senior staff departures than the Obama administration and the Bush administration. And what does that do? It goes back to Connell's point. There's a certain degree of turmoil that I think is going on in this White House. Why, if you're on the outside looking in, if you're a professional and you're a communicator, why would you want to go to this White House right now when you think, I could be here next week and fired next month if the president's temper goes? You need to have a calm ship. And I think that's what Mercedes Schlapp and some of the other folks in the communication communications shop are trying to do is to calm these waters, calm the storm, and get the president back on an even keel. But he's really the communications head. The president, no, there's no question. Right? There's no, you can have people come and go, but, you know, he's the guy, right? The tweeter-in-chief is certainly the communications <laughs> okay. director. All right, guys, thank you all very, very much.